Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When fat cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm baby man Just caught a touchdown From the base Cardinal 79 ATL. I know y'all done heard about all the stuff in the Ozone magazine. You know what I'm saying? Asking about Pimp C. What's he talking about? Is he talking about the ATL? Pimp C, we got Pimp C on the phone right now. Pimp C. Yeah, what's up? What up, Pimp C? Talk to me, homeboy. What's going on with this stuff in the Ozone magazine, man? A Town A Town's kind of furious. You tell me how you took it. I'm going to tell you what I meant. Well, it was going down back then too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just wasn't. We didn't have the spotlight on us, so right. it wasn't publicized yeah. like it is no more. Right. Don't you fools realize that uh, we can get a whole bunch of money together? Didn't y'all just see what happened with Bun Single? Mm. Like man, these boys is tripping. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As much money as we have, man, as much business as we giving this Rolls Royce lot and the Cadillac lot and the BMW lot, what is you mad about? Hmm. We all living behind big gates, big old houses, having big jewels, and you know, maybe folks can. And look, and and if you're really mad, come on down to the gym and holler at Jay. We'll let you put the boxing gloves on, and y'all can box it out, and then we can go, you know. And make some money off of that. Yeah, and we can go and y'all can have a beer and I'm gonna have some cranberry juice and we, we you know, we can eat some big steak and do it like players and, and then make some abs together and talk about what happened. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about making money, man. I don't know I don't know what, what they're thinking about. Yeah. But right now, all these yes men. Blazing on the charts and bumped in nightclubs all over the country. UGK, the Port Arthur born Southern rap group, was on top. Members Bum B and Pimp C recorded a long list of albums. Until 2001, Pimp C, aka Chad Butler, was arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The only thing promised to a player is the penitentiary. He was sentenced to eight years at Rocheron in the Tarot Unit. This was one of the things that UGK rapped about, the right. prison system. Right. Is it different? That's ironic, that's imagine? ironic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. With life imitating art, the 31-year-old rapper producer sits behind a glass window. He's served three years already for a crime that has put his ability to record on hold, but not his life. I'm using this time to my advantage instead of just doing time. So I'm constantly reading, constantly trying to put some fat on my head. Speak pimpin', baby. Gone is the bling and the collaborations with hip hop legends like Jay Z, which put Pimp C on the map. Now, all I know about the Texas boys. That's replaced with Jailhouse White, working in the prison kitchen, and lots of optimism. See, they don't really have Pimp C locked up. They got Chad Butler locked up. Pimp C still free. It's the brand new album by Pimp C. Just Tuesday, a new Pimp C album, The Sweet James Jones Stories, was released by Rapalot, even though he's been in prison for three years. I, I trust James Prince, and um, I know he's not going to put nothing. Early fatherless. For leaving my kids, of course. Of course I do. When you... Yeah, I put me here. I allowed for the situation to happen where these people could get me caught up in this system. But out of the system, Pimp C is far from irrelevant. He says he still gets fan mail, radio airplay, and what he calls love from the industry. And it's a blessing. Mike Jones keeps screaming my name. Lil Flip is screaming my name. Uh, Power Wild is screaming my name. But what satisfies Pimp C more are memories of his hometown. <laughs> yeah, I want to go back to Port Arthur. 
Until then, she counts the days left on the conviction, longing for a reunion with those closest to his heart. I just want to go to church with my grandma. You know, and to sit down with the old folks in my family. Pepsi didn't really want to discuss the issue of parole because he knows it's totally subjective and what other people think about his behavior in prison. But he says there's a possibility that he could get out by the end of the year. Isaiah Carey, Fox 26 News. The Houston rap duo Underground Kings was at the peak of its career on the charts and on the way to a Grammy nomination when tragedy struck in December. That's when Chad Butler, known as Pimp C, died in a Los Angeles hotel room. The turnout at his funeral in Port Arthur showed just how much he was loved and admired in this area. Just this week, the L.A. County Coroner's Office ruled the rapper's death accidental and attributed it to a combination of a disorder, a sleep disorder called apnea, and prescription strength cough syrup. And our guest this morning is Bernard Freeman, known as Bun B. He is one of those who was closest to Pimp C. Good morning, and thanks for being here. Now, Thank you were one of Chad's best partners, grew up with him, but you're going to be doing a concert tonight. Yes, I am. Um, now, now, this concert is following the release of the information, which says that sleep, apnea, yes. and syrup, and we know that syrup on the streets usually has codeine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, when you heard that, what what went through your mind? Well, it, it was sad, but it's 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 a definitely real thing, you know. Living in Houston, Texas, um, being um, a person of, that affiliates with the, the the common man on the street, we all know that in Houston, Texas, we tend to we have a problem now with the cough syrup epidemic. And while it wasn't solely the cause of his death, we have to be very real about the consequences to some of these things. Um, PMC did have a prescription for it, but you have to be very careful when you get prescriptions for certain things because sometimes you can tend to um, go a little too far with some of these things. They have very strong addictive qualities, pills and syrups and whatnot. So um, to anyone out there, you know, that thinking about sipping syrup or currently abusing syrup, it may want to take a very good look at yourself, a long look at yourself in but, that cup. But in this case, we were told that the bottle did not have a prescription label on it. Right. Well, I, actually, I wasn't in Los Angeles, so I'm not sure exactly about the bottle itself. But um, in, in Houston, on the streets, um, there is a you know there is an epidemic with with the people sipping the yeah. cough syrup, and it's isn't something it, that's going to have to be addressed. Music as well? I yes, mean, yes, there there, there is also songs. Big Mo and then um, DJ Screw. Apparently, right. that there must there might have been a connection as well with syrup. There is it changing the music? Um, I can only speak for myself personally. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, we had been taking down, toning down the content of certain things in the music lately. My new album, of course, probably won't have any references to cough syrup in it, but um, I it's a little bit more than the music. I think it's gonna start affecting the, the personal lives of a lot of artists and people in the Houston rap scene. Now, Underground Kings. Now, after eight albums, 14 years together, mm -hmm. he dies, but you get a Grammy nomination. Wow, yeah, it, it was bittersweet to say the least, but um, you know, this is all due to Chad and his um, blessed talents. Um, he was a very talented young man, had a very strong, clear vision of where he wanted to go musically. And um, this Grammy was something that he had always said that we would one day be able to get, which I wasn't really sure about it myself, but I had all the confidence in the world in him. So we stuck at it. We kept moving forward. Um, he kept bringing all the talent that he possessed, putting it in, into the music. And uh, we ended up coming up with this great song with a... Uh, Outcast, uh, Players Anthem, uh, produced by Three Six Mafia, and the uh, powers that be acknowledged it, and uh, we have a Grammy nomination now. It's all due to Chad. Well, congratulations, and you're also going to be performing tonight. Yes. This will be the first time since he passed away. Mm -hmm. um, was it something that was a little bit hard for you? Yeah, um, initially, you know, um, there were a lot of offers that had come through for a lot of money to, to get the first concert, but it wasn't really about money. I wanted to make sure that um, I had given myself enough time to grieve. I wanted to make sure that the venue we chose to come back at and the city we chose to come back at was the right place because we have a lot of fans that are also grieving with us. Yeah. And and with Houston being, you know, the home base f for the group, um, I thought it was a, the right place to come. I thought now was the right time, and uh, 
today's a good day. It's going to be a beautiful sunny day. Yes, like I Mike know, said, right? And, uh, the weather is just perfect. And we just hope everybody comes out and celebrates it with us. We're going to uplift Pimp C's name and let everybody know it's still UGK for life. And you did say that uh, his mom was going to be attending yes, this concert yes, his, tonight. His mom called. Well, she called me and she 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 was like, well, I want to come, but I don't want to make it, you know, a little bit over emotional for mm -hmm. you. But I had to let her know the reality is, is it's going to be an emotional night anyway. So, uh, you know, I may need her as a rock to lean on, you know. And not a bad rock to lean on as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Bernard Freeman, known in the music industry as Bun Bun B. B. Already. <laughs> Thank you so very much. The best of luck with that concert tonight as you get back into performing all over again. Thank well, you, We both. appreciate you opening up as well. I uh, appreciate you. it. We getting to the legends now. We in the great state of Texas with it. Y'all meet us in Port Arthur, PA. Anybody from the city tap in, y'all let them know we in UGKville. Matter of fact, we need to start a petition to let our local councilmen know that we need to change the name of the city from Port Arthur to UGKville. Now, we are covering a man that needs no introduction. And me personally, being introduced to his music after he was released from jail, I want to go on to consider him a musical genius when I look at the totality of things that he did as far as production, hooks, and songwriting. And though no introduction is needed, we talking about the self-proclaimed man that still would be riding Mercedes even if it was an old rap game the legendary Chad Pimp C. Butler. Now, there's no way that I could cover the streets or the streets dealing with hip hop without covering one of my personal favorites, Pimp C. Now, Pimp C's life has so many turns and angles, it was hard for me to figure out what I was gonna talk about or where I was gonna start. So for those that are familiar with Pimp C's career, y'all would know that his musical career almost coincides with his legal troubles but regardless of the fact that he would spend a bulk of the prime of his career behind bars and pass away prematurely not long after his release, he would leave an impact and influence on the game, especially Southern rap music that would almost go unmatched if you look at the time that he was given. Now, most of us know the story about UGK forming at high school, then to sign to an independent label and have success, leading to them signing with major record label job at that time where they would drop three classic albums which all would chart in the billboards top 200 but it would be in between the time where the group would take somewhat of a hiatus from 1996 to around 2000 or 2001 where pimp c will first get into what would be his long list that would all start and be connected to an incident that would occur on December 16th in 2000. Now, the incident would occur only a month after the death of DJ Screw. So who knows what Pimp C was going through pretty much dealing with that situation. But he happened to find himself in Houston Sharptown Mall in an audio biography that Julia Beverly wrote that I would suggest y'all go read. She would explain that he might have been there checking out one of the females at a kiosk, but he would happen to stop at a record store and find himself in a shoe store. And that location in this incident would be the cause of pretty much all Pimp C's legal trouble as he would pretty much get into a situation with some ratchets in the store. And almost every way you read, the situation plays out where one of the ratchets are axed well, do you know who this man is? And she screams, no. And something to the essence of fuck UGK or fuck Pimp C. And man, even if you don't listen to Pimp C's music, even if you might've seen an interview, man, Pimp C just kind of reminds me of somebody's mad uncle. Like, yeah, especially, like even a nigga from New York. That's like, man, cause niggas in New York got family down South. It, it'll be an uncle and he just ready to snap on anything. And when I say anything, shit, saying fuck him is going to be everything. So shit, if he's snapping for anything, you know he's snapping for everything. And just as I would expect from Pimp C, he would launch with a barrage of obscenities, starting with the hoes and then ending with the bitches. And the situation would trickle outside of the store. And the situation would escalate where... Pimp C said that one of the females would begin to start reaching in her purse where he would assume that she was reaching for a handgun. 
that would lead him to brandish his. And in the same autobiography, Julia Beverly said that Pimp C pretty much never went nowhere without the strap after he would get into that situation early on into his career with Master P, if y'all know about that one. But long story short, after that, the cops would end up being called and Pimp C would end up being identified and in his own words, being brutalized by the police outside of the mall while in his car. They would go on to find the handgun in question as well as a small bag of marijuana. And he would end up being placed on probation for that offense. But it would be a series of not reporting to the parole officer, failing to complete community service hours and issues with his medication and him signing into a program that would lead to him serving a seven month stint after he would be placed on probation. And then after some of the same situations would continue to occur, he would find himself in the courtroom of a judge bar. And according to Vice, this would be the wrong time to be in front of any judge in Texas because beginning in the year 2000, they would go on to build more than 50 jails. I want to say somewhere around the, the neighborhood of 62. And Vice would even go further on to say that just the people under the judicial system, as far as being locked up and on parole in the state of Texas, is going to be more than the population of states like Wyoming and Vermont and shit like that. So, so that's just to give you an idea of how big business the prison system is in the state of Texas. Not to mention they'll execute you faster than a month. Pimp C would eventually be released from jail in, in 2007 with Texas seeing a height and rise of notability that was never seen before with acts like Paul Wall, Mike Jones, Slim Thug, Chameleonaire, just to name a few, UGK would drop their fifth self-titled album, Underground Kings, and it would go on to debut at number one on Billboard, and it would include the Grammy-nominated smash hit, International Players. And to me, it's really the group finally seeing national success that make everything that played out in December of 2007 all the more sad. According to Pimp C's wife, he was scheduled to fly home from a trip from California where he had been recording with Too Short, where he would end up being found in the Mondarian Hotel in West Hollywood, where he would be found unresponsive by hotel staff and pronounced dead at the age of 33. Now, before I wrap up, I really want to ask everybody, and particularly my people in Texas, who do y'all got, Ghetto Boys or UGK? And for anybody tuned in that never heard a song from Pimp C, if I had one to tell you to go check out, it would be True Stories, where he explains a series of true stories. And if you wonder if Pimp C is a street nigga, if you disagree, come back and get in the comment box so we can argue back and forth. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box. Y'all run it up, especially my people from Port Arthur. We want to hear from y'all. Everybody in Texas, matter of fact, if you tuned in and we haven't hit your city, let us know what city to hit. And not only that, let us know what gangster we need to talk about. And y'all know the rules, man. If y'all feel like we got something wrong, if y'all feel like it's something that's going on that we ain't talking about that need to be talked about, y'all get in the comment box. Y'all flooded. Y'all hit me on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all remember, we the voice of the streets. They gonna hear us. Mob gang.